This is Shopify Liquid in 10 minutes. Learn how to write liquid code so you can turn this into this by writing this. I've been building Shopify themes for years and I'm gonna teach you five years worth of liquid in 10 minutes. My name is Nick and let's get started. Liquid is Shopify's templating language, which means it's server-side rendered and sends data from Shopify to your template file. Think of it as how we display our product data on our theme, which also means we need to understand how Shopify's data is structured so that we can access it. Anytime you're accessing data from Shopify, you'll want to look at the documentation so you can see what you're working with. I've copied the product data from the Shopify docs and pasted it into this liquid sandbox environment so you can follow along. Check the description for the links and the data. Now there are three different types of liquid syntax that we need to memorize. The first is objects, and you'll see it's just double curly braces, and this is used to display data. So this is like when we get data from Shopify, it's actually gonna output it on the screen. The next is tags, which looks very similar, but you'll see it has these percentage signs instead of the double uh, curly braces, and that just means that it's logic. It's logic that tells the template what to do, like what to show and what to hide, etc. And then the last thing is filters, and you'll see this example right here. Uh, it's used usually within the double curly braces, and it's used to modify the liquid output. This will make more sense when we look at examples, but the one thing you need to take away is that you need to know these three things. First, let's look at objects. So I have here the product information that I copied from the Shopify documentation, and we're gonna take a look at how to use these curly braces like so. They're very straightforward to use. You literally just use the syntax we just saw, and you can type out the name of the object you want to print out. So let's say that I wanna look at the description of this product. You can see here that we have the liquid code, and then we have the actual output. So what this means is this is what we're writing on our template file, but this is what's gonna be actually output for the browser. So you can see that it's pretty simple to access our data here. All we need to do is access the key of the uh, object that we're working with, and then we can pick any of these uh, values that we want. So perhaps I want to get the product title. Well, all I have to do is do product.title. And then typically what you do is you'd maybe want to wrap it in maybe like an H1 or something like that so that it actually outputs it in you know a heading. So let's keep this going and display a couple other things. I'm gonna first display the product price. So I'll do this again the curly braces and I will close my p tag and you can see right here. I'm also going to add one more maybe the created app field. So I will come down here. Awesome, and we can see it being output right here. And for every product, this is how we are going to be able to display this. Well, maybe I want to be able to add some conditional statements here. Maybe if I only want to display this, first of all, if the product is available. You'll see right here there's a available with a Boolean right here. If I wanted to hide this, I could say, and then we could say if product.available is truthy. And all we've done here is we've made sure that this only displays if it's available. I'm gonna change this to false, and you'll see that it does no longer show. So this is how we control conditional logic. The main things that we're gonna use are if and then unless. Unless is kind of cool because it's like the inverse of if. So if the product up is available, then it's gonna show this. And if we change this, it then hides and does the same thing. So it's an inverse tool, which is very handy. Now let's go back to our if statement. And maybe I'm gonna change this to where I'm gonna display if the price is greater than zero, then I would like to display this. Now I'm gonna scroll down here and find the price value. Here it is, it's set to 10. So maybe what I could do is I'll say, if it's greater than 10, display this, else is less than or equal to 10. Awesome, so you can see that this works as well. We have our product price, which is uh, set equal to 10. So instead, it's going to come here and hit this else if. And we can, of course, have as many of these else ifs as we would like. But there's also an easier way to do this, where we could just say else, because everything else is going to be in that condition as well. This is some basic conditional logic. Now let's look at using a for loop. So right here, we have our options, which options in the product schema is for the different variants that are available. And I'm going to create a for loop. I'm gonna say for option in product.options. And then I'm going to display, remember anytime I wanna display output, I use the double curly braces. And I'm going to say option, like so. 
So we can see that it is outputting the option to the screen, just like we have here, size and strength. So we're able to loop through this. We can also combine more. So let's say that I want to check if, if the option is equal to size, then maybe I want to display it capitalized or something like that. So we can see here in our output, size is then capitalized because it fits in this, and then the other one is just printed out as normal. Okay, so now let's take a look at the filters. How can we use filters to change this? Well, for example, let's take a look at this size right here. Instead of typing that out, which is not very scalable, we always want to define the dynamic, the, uh, dynamic value, right? So we'd like to display something like this, but how can we make this uppercase? Well, liquid filter that we can use called upcase. So you can see after I use our syntax here, which is the bar, and then I can put this in here, you can see that it dynamically transforms this to be capitalized. And similarly here, if I wanted to, I can use downcase, the opposite, but the same thing of making it all lowercase. So you can see filters are pretty handy here, but let's go back to an ex earlier example. Let's say I want to go back to displaying the created at time. So I'm going to come back here and create my P element, and within I will create our object syntax where I will say product.created at and you'll see that it is displayed in this kind of odd time. Well to make this more human readable all I have to do is come in and add this filter called time tag and then you can pass an argument here called abbreviated date and this playground doesn't support it, but if I throw up this, this is what it actually looks like when we output it. You'll see it creates this time element with a nice formatted date. So another good example of how to use dynamic tags is using the image tag. And you can see how the image tag is actually rendered. All we're doing is passing the product right here, and then we have this image URL tag where we specify an argument called width, and then we have another filter called the image tag. So first let's look at the image URL. All the image URL is doing is outputting the link to that image. So that makes sense, right? It's just giving a source that we would use in the image tag. But then we come back here, and the image tag is actually what creates this image element, this image HTML element. So in other words, instead of using the old school image like this, we don't have to do that because this does it for us. We can just use this tag and Shopify handles the rest for us. Another good example to look at is the money filter. So if we come here to the money filter in the documentation, you'll see very similarly that we can pass this money filter and it will format everything for us very nicely. When it comes in just a standard integer like this, what we can do is we can have money with currency, which is where it shows us where the money is actually or where the currency is. We can also use without currency and we can use trailing zeros or without trailing zeros. Several different options. Now let's look at some more advanced scenarios. I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna change this product object out and I'm gonna swap it for the cart object. If we look at the cart object, we'll see that there's a items array here, which has each item that we have in our shopping cart at a given moment. Now, the easiest way to do this is to create a for loop where we're gonna be able to use each item in cart.items and then we can output each item's data like this. Well, what if I want to actually display something here at the bottom where I can see the total of the prices added together? Well, we can use a liquid filter to help with that. Right here outside of the for loop, I'm going to make a h3 tag and I'm gonna display the total, but I'm not gonna do some manual means of adding this up. Instead, this filter gives us the ability to say cart.items, sum, and then I can give the name of the attribute that I want it to sum on. So I, first I'll do the price, because that's what we wanted to see here. Excellent, we can see that it does in fact display 124.99, which is the total of these two products. Now I wanna show you another cool filter that I use all the time. So I've added some tags here back to our product. So we have our product again. Let's just list out the different product tags. One of the use cases I often find is on the product page, I will tag a product so that I know uh, to show something like a badge or something that is very specific to that product. Well, rather than looping through and checking like one by one, if this tag equals this, there's an easier way to do this. All I have to do instead of looping through each one is simply make a conditional where I check if product.tags contains healing.
So we can see that it is showing because healing is one of the tags. But if I remove it, it no longer shows. Now, real quick, I want to get back to the Shopify documentation. If I'm on the product page, I want to be able to know what that object actually looks like. So all I have to do is come to the API liquid object for the product, and I can see all of the data here. So this is for the product page, but most importantly, if I come back here, not only do I have the fields, I can click on map and see where it's available. You'll see that it's directly accessible in the product template. Another good one to look at would be like the cart. If I come to the cart object, again, you'll see all the different attributes that we're able to use. And then we can also see that it's available globally throughout the entire theme. Now, the last piece of advice I would leave you is to find this website right here. We'll be in the description and quickly go through and see all the different options that are available with Liquid. This is a very easy, well-written documentation guide on all the different things you can do with tags, filters, and objects. I hope this has been helpful. Please let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you next time.